Hi everyone and welcome to my table. As I was looking over for our table talk so far, I realized that we have covered a lot of ground and it has been a great joy to have you join me at my table virtually each week as we consider our faith. Today, we're gonna to turn to Deuteronomy chapter six, verses four through nine, which reads, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorpost of your house and your gates. The scripture should sound familiar as we started our table talk series with a part of some of these verses from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now, if you recall, last week we finished up a series of table talks about the Apostles' Creed. At the start of those series, I mentioned that I wanted to look at some of the things that we commit to in our baptismal service and say that we're going to teach our children when they are baptized. In the United Methodist Church, we also make vows at baptism. When children are baptized, parents in the United Methodist Church vow to raise them in the faith of the, and also to have them in the congregation in worship. And then the congregation vows that they're going to help the parents and the child to grow in faith. But we don't really get more specific than that. When Pastor Dave first mentioned that part of Lutheran baptism is to vow to teach our children the Apostles' Creed, the Ten Commandments, and the Lord's Prayer, it seemed a little bit weird to me. But at the same time, I really love this idea. These three things, when learned and not just memorized, help us to know some of the basic tenets of our Christian faith. Thus, we are on this adventure together in our table talks of exploring these things that have been vowed together in baptism. So this week, we're going to turn our attention to the Ten Commandments. Without looking them up, how many of you right now as you're watching this can name all Ten Commandments? You get bonus points if you can name them all in order. To be 100% honest with you, if you caught me on a Sunday morning and asked me to name the Ten Commandments, I'm not sure I could name all ten of them. I'd probably come pretty close, and they probably wouldn't be in order. I can tell you that you can find them in Deuteronomy chapter 5. I'm never exactly sure what chapter they can be found in in Exodus. For some reason, Deuteronomy sticks, but Exodus I can't remember. And I could also tell you the difference between the list that's found in Exodus and the list that's found in Deuteronomy. Perhaps part of the reason that we don't pay too much attention to the Ten Commandments is that we are a people who are saved by grace. We are redeemed not by our own work or anything that we could do or boast about, but we are redeemed by the work of Christ. We are forgiven and freed and redeemed because of Jesus and what Jesus has done. Therefore, we rightly place our emphasis and our focus on Jesus. And in doing so, we don't always quite recall the Ten Commandments. Unless, of course, it's something that really benefits us, like telling our children that they should obey their mother and their father. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus says that he came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. This leads me to believe that we can't just disregard the law. Instead, we should know it, and we should consider it in light of what Jesus has done and in light of grace. Our Bible verse today comes to us in Deuteronomy 6. And remember I said you can find the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy 5, so it's right after the Ten Commandments. The first part of this text is known by our Jewish brothers and sisters as the Shema. The Shema is a Hebrew verb, which means to hear, and the Shema is a central part of Jewish faith, and really our faith as well. It proclaims that there is only one God and that we should love that God with all that we have. Before Jesus, keeping the law was the only way that humanity had to really live into their love of God because sin separates us from God. God is perfect, so God can't be around sin. So the law helped people to reduce sin and draw close to God and show God their love through their desire to sin less and therefore be really close to God. And that works great if humans are good at keeping all of the law. The problem is, is that humans are flawed and not good at keeping the law. And so, in the end, humans could draw pretty close to God through the law, but couldn't get really all the way close to God because there was still sin that kept us separated from God. If human beings could maintain the law and live it out perfectly the way Jesus did, then we wouldn't have needed Jesus. But... And the fact is that Jesus did come and we did need a Messiah. 
Now, that being said, Jesus doesn't come and say, Hey, guys, the law doesn't work, so just forget about it. Instead, Jesus said, I'm coming not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Jesus fulfilled the law and showed us what perfect love is, what perfect love looks like, and how to live a life of love that fulfills the law of God. As we prepare to spend the next few weeks looking at the law of God, and specifically the Ten Commandments, I invite you and your family to take some time to look up the Ten Commandments. Look them up in the Bible, Deuteronomy 5, or you can search around and find that chapter in Exodus I can't remember. And write them down. Don't take the easy way and Google it. Then hang the commandments up in a place in your home where you'll see them every day. When you pass by the commandments, you can remember that you are saved by grace to live a life of loving God and loving others. And I just want to show you, I already have my list ready to go. All right, I look forward to seeing you around the table next time as we begin to dive into these 10 commandments that God has given to us.